Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Double, and today we're going to take a look at another Lakato product. Man, I really got to thank Lakato for hooking me up with so much stuff lately to let you guys know about. This one was pretty cool. I did a lot of testing over the past week with it, trying out different configurations. I came up with this, and you'll have to wait a minute to see what's on the other side. As you can see, it's got this built-in power supply, and I really was kind of torn on that idea. It works. It works really well, actually. A couple of things happened along the way, and I tried out all sorts of different pedal configurations. If you take a look at their listing on Amazon, it's just called that Lakato Guitar Pedal Board with Built-In Power Supply. And this is the smaller one. They do have this bigger version of it, think with the same power supply underneath of it, I'll express all of my pros and cons about this thing because I do have my opinions about pedal boards with built-in power supplies. I have to say this one didn't let me down. I did have a couple of hills to climb along the way. Let's say that uh, because certain configurations of pedals worked really well. Certain ones didn't. That's just kind of how it goes with certain pedal power supplies, especially when it's just got a limited amount of output. So let's rewind and take a look at everything that we get with this pedal board that has a built-in power supply. Even though Lakato sent this over, everything I say about it is going to be my own opinion. They haven't asked me to say anything. They just sent this along for me to keep and let you guys know about. So here's what I think about this thing. The board came well packed. There was no movement within this box as I moved it and shook it around. It has a really high quality bag that fits the board very properly. I'm going to get to something just something to think about when you put your board back in here once you've loaded it up i'll get to that about halfway through the video or so with my thoughts the bag does have two zippers one on each side easy to open it's got these little feet at the bottom just what you would need to move around with a small pedal board i opted to go for the smaller pedal board just because i really am into having just a smaller setup these days and i think there's something to be said for it i have a massive board that i absolutely love that i'll never get rid of but this is going to be just what i need here to pop on my desk what it comes with is just about everything you need to get going it's got velcro the side that you would put on the pedal because the pedal board actually has the other side of Velcro on it. It's got like eight power cables that will go from the power supply over to your pedal. And then there's the main power supply for your pedal power supply. It's an 18 volt 1.2 amp brick that you plug into the wall. Oh, yeah, and it also comes with the zip ties. Unfortunately, it didn't come with any of the little stick on zip tie stays. That would have been really helpful. And once you get this thing all unwrapped and take a good look at it, it's really cool how the power supply is integrated right into the board. It comes with seven nine volt spots, a 12 volt and an 18 volt, as well as a USB to power it. Now at the very other end of the USB, the very first one is the 18 volt input. I do wish that there was some way to Keep that isolated so that you don't accidentally plug the power input into one of the outputs. Just make sure you are very aware of what you're plugging in in the back. I tried this, like I said, out with a bunch of different configurations. Here I'm using a couple of cheaper pedals. This board came in right on time. I was getting ready to film a second part of the video that I just put up not long ago about using an inexpensive booster as a preamp along with a cabinet IR pedal. I decided to go ahead and move a bunch of that stuff onto this board and test out how well it worked together. Now this came out really, really good. The, all of these pedals sounded just fine and powered up great. And there was no weird noises or anything like that. Even with some of these kind of cheaper pedals, you know, something that you do have to remember when you're setting this up is that the cables that they give you are right angled on one side and straight on the other. So I opted to put the right angled ones in at the actual power supply. Usually I would like the right angle ones at the pedal, but I'll get to why I did that in just a second. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning, just about the design of the power supply. I wish that the 18 volt input could be on the outside the way it is, but I wish that somehow they could arrange it so that all of the outputs for the pedals are underneath. Regardless of that, it's all working, working well, juiced up, powered up. And here's a quick 
bit from that video just to show you how clear it sounded. <laughs> Like I said, I tried this board with a bunch of different setups and my real, really the only problem I had once I started trying different things was this wireless that I have. This wireless unit really created a lot of noise. So underneath that distortion pedal, I popped a hum eliminator because that thing right there is just a little noisy and that did the trick. Any odd noises that were being brought out from the power supply because of that wireless unit was 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 fixed up if there was a way to put like a, a cover over that or a little slip on thing because when you go to now put your whole pedal board into the bag i'm afraid i'm going to smash all of my cables right into that power supply and like or if somebody grabs it and and says here let me throw this in the car for you and and they're just not really careful with it so you see right through there, it's just, that's where all of the power is. And that's where your, that's where your gig lies. That's a gig killer. So I advise putting it in this way with the power supplies facing the handle. Or not the supplies, but the power supply outputs facing the handle. That way they're protected by your hand. And if you happen to slam it down a little bit, it's not gonna bang onto something. That would be the only way that I think it would work out. I was showing the kitten how this whole thing was laid out and he wasn't really too happy. He, d he just didn't like, uh, he's an analog guy. I mean, what can I say? He's done. So putting together the final bit of what ended up on this board was quite a bit of fun. I got to pick out a couple of my favorite pedals. I really wanted to limit myself with what I really could just take anywhere and be happy with. So the Tonex pedal and a reverb and a delay and some wiring and a little bit of creative Velcroing and next thing I knew, I had uh, kind of like a, a budgety, boutique board here. And again, I had to use the hum eliminator here because that wireless that I have, eh, it's okay. It gets a lot of dropouts. I'm going to be doing a video real soon on the Lakato wireless dongle. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell so you get notifications about when my next video comes up. Lakato has been awesome and sent me some really cool stuff. If this is your kind of thing, then you might be interested in my opinion about why I think the Lakato dongles at 49 bucks are actually better than that $400 pedal board wireless unit that I have. <laughs> So my final thoughts on the Lakato powered pedal board. Uh, this mini one is great. I mean, I, I'm very happy with the way that this all came out. If you end up with a situation like me where you have something that's just a little digitally sounding and is creating that kind of sound, that's exactly what it sounds like too. Throw yourself a, a real cheap like $20 hum eliminator up in that bad boy between there and there and you'll be set okay this is cool i would only make a couple of additions but the additions that i make kind of defeat the purpose of the coolness the changes i guess maybe i would the only thing i fear is just i'm gonna plug my power supply into one of the wrong things so i'll probably tape up whichever ones i don't end up using as far as 
outputs. And then also be aware that you have a 12 and an 18 volt over there on that side. So if you don't use those, you might want to tape those up too. Lakato, thanks again for sending this over. And thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you watching until this point of the video. I'll see you at the next one. All right. Thank <laughs> you.